Hello ladies and gentlemen of the Stellar Crew, my name is Koda, and welcome to a game called Do Not Take This Cat Home. This is an itch.io game, it caught my attention, I, it's supposedly a horror game, but we're gonna, we're gonna start it out together. You're not having a great day as usual, oh isn't that normal? We've got save options on the bottom here. Uh, it's raining too? Of course it is. Oh great, it's the first time in a while you've felt like going out, but in the middle of your walk it just starts to rain. Typical, but you know, maybe this is just a sign that you should have stayed home today, you know? Uh, you can always try again tomorrow, right? You turn to head home when meow? Uh-oh. What was that? Me and Lex are accustomed to this. There are only a few people around on the street. Makes sense due to the increase in missing persons around the area recently. And we got a missing person report. Okay. You know what? It's obviously the cat that's doing this. Well, that and the weather. But none of them react to the sound at all? Curiosity guiding your steps, you follow the sound to the entrance of a dark digging dingy? Dingy? A dark dingy alleyway. You timidly enter the alley and walk forward. The ground dampened by the rain makes your steps louder and more confident than you actually feel. Meow, finally, the sound source is er, yeah, the sound source comes into view in the cold, dim light of the alley. At the end of the alley in a big cardboard box. It's a cat. Guess it should have been obvious. It's an interesting looking cat, pretty yellow eyes, shining like gold among this dark, dark sea of its black fur. It puts its paws up on the edge of the box and looks at you. Meow? Uh, temptation, so cute. And it definitely knows it. You've never had much of an opinion, uh, one way or another about cats before, but if, if they're like, uh, but if they're all like this one, it's a shock that they haven't already found a way to rule the world. You don't know you'd always, I'm having a stroke. You don't think you'd be bowing down to a feline overlord. You look around the alley with a small frown. Who leaves a cat in a cardboard box anyways? Wouldn't they just jump out and leave the box eventually? They really like boxes though. They just, I mean, I don't blame them, but the cat doesn't answer you, obviously. Also doesn't, it, it also doesn't do as you suggest and leave the box. It's just looking at you menacingly. And if waiting for you to make them, as if waiting for you to make the next move. The name of this game is Don't Take the Cat Home. So, uh, I think we're gonna do the logical thing and take it home. You know what? You're coming with me. <laughs> you reach into the box and pick up the cat holding it out in front of you. Why not? Meow. You're all alone and well, I'm kind of in the same boat myself. So you bring the cat close. You don't realize it was shivering until just then, but it slowly breathes, but it slowly breathes easier as it presses into your chest. Why not stick together, right? At least for a while. See, look, the demon cat is just happy. You think, you think a little while will probably be more like a day. You'll be responsible and take it to a shelter tomorrow. But for now, let's get you out of the rain, okay? Meow. You stop by a small local pet store for some cat food and then head back home. You live in a modest apartment. One bedroom, one bathroom. One you, uh, one you live, one you living alone in it. So it feels weird having another living being inside it after so long, even if it's just a cat. You should have got one a long time ago. After locking the front door and placing the cat on the floor, you watch for a moment as a curiosity explores a new environment. Even the feline to its own devices, you just, you set about making the both of you some dinner. You take out a can of cat food and open it with a tab. Oh, with the tab on top, yeah. Put some cat food on the saucer and you click your, and you click your, oh, like, yeah, I got you. To call it over. Uh, it perks up, beckoning and rushes over. Looks <laughs> at the plate of food. This is supposed to be a horror game. It completely ignores it. Not hungry, I guess. You try to not let it annoy you. The cat doesn't understand the concept of money to appreciate that you spent your hard-earned cash on it. After all, it's just a cat. I'll just leave it here in case you get hungry, okay? Cat rubs against your leg with a purr. Is this cat gonna eat me? Is it literally a demon? You smile. That's enough of a thanks for you. Follows you to the kitchen as you start your own dinner. You decide to have enough ingredients for a sandwich. Bread toasted, mayo, mustard spread, turkey and cheese and lettuce perfectly placed, tomato sliced. Ow. You, you wince as you cut your finger on the knife slicing the tomato. Stupid. Stupid, you silly goose. You feel a little embarrassed, such a blunder in sight, tossing the knife into a, onto the cutting board. You're about to head to the bathroom uh, for a bandage when the cat hops up on the counter, sniffs the knife and meows almost pointedly at you. Don't worry, I'm all right. It's just a... You watch as the cat starts to... It's licking the blood off the knife. Okay. Okay. Oh, sorry. It's licking my blood off the knife. 
actually. You're so shocked that by the time you come to your senses, the knife has been completely clean. The cat sits back staring at you. You feel a little uneasy, the cat. Sure, cats are meat-eating predators, but that was a little weird, right? You know, cat expert, but it's definitely not something an ordinary cat would do. Or is it? I feel like it would be something that a regular cat would do. Well, regardless, you're not about to abandon the cat in need. You were going to take it to a shelter tomorrow anyway, so it's one night of awkwardness, right? Just a weird cat. The rest of the evening, unfortunately, goes downhill from there, even after covering up your fingers cut with the bandage. The cat keeps trying to lick at the wound. While you're eating your sandwich and you're cleaning up the kitchen, trying to watch TV, you gently push it away every time. Oh, come on. Go away. But you're starting to get worried about the strange behavior. What if it just, what if it got the taste of blood and thinks you're food now? You're not sure what you'll do if it gets more aggressive. You keep thinking about the cat food sitting in the corner, untouched. Meow. 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 Oh, God. It's getting, it's getting aggressive. Uh, oh, come on already. Enough. Yeah, you shove it away a little more forcefully this time, and it's annoying, so you feel bad immediately, but before you can do anything, the cat meows sharply at you and dashes off around the corner to the hallway. You just give a big old deep sigh. At this point in time, you're just worried that it's going to take a bite out of you in your sleep. Maybe the vet will have an idea of how to calm it. You can only hope you don't have many other options left over aside of tossing out in the rain. After finding the number of the local vet, you pick up the landline and lights went out. The lights went out. Great. Just great. The rain must have knocked the power out. You check your cell phone only to see that it's out of battery. Your cell phone is out of batteries. What, you put double A batteries in that thing? You must have forgotten to charge it before before leaving this early. Or leaving out early, whatever. Outing had been so spur of the moment that it had no doubt messed with your usual routine. You grab the flashlight and turn it on. It's quiet. Too quiet. Did the rain stop? But then why'd the power go out? Rain is not why power goes out. What? You look outside. The sky is pitch black. What time is it? You go to check the clock. The cat sits on top of your digital clock. How is it working? If, it, if there's no electricity, or is it battery powered too? Staring at you. Look at that. Look at that beautiful little kitty. Oh. You realize the clock shouldn't be working. Yeah, that's what I just said. But going haywire. The cat stares at you completely still. You think it was a statue if you didn't know any better. It's not giving off any indication that it's alive. It's not blinking or breathing. Yeah, cats do that normally. It's eyes. That, that's literally what they do. They'll just sit there and stare. It's, that's normal for cats. What, was this a horror game because of that? No, this is normal. Cats are normally like this. This isn't normal. No, no, it is normal. Do you, have you never been around a cat? Cats will literally just do this. This is completely normal. I'm not even joking. It's Pepper, too. I mean, Pepper won't just sit still, though. Pepper just everywhere. She's all over the place. It is normal, though. You're afraid. I am afraid. Why is there a save button? There's literally save slots. I'm not afraid. You want to run, I don't want to run, and I'm not afraid of the cat just sitting there staring at me with the numbers saying kill on it. You considered tossing the cat out? No, I mean, I don't. But as soon as you, as soon as the thought enters your head, you feel a sharp urge to vomit. <laughs> okay, now that's not normal. Or unless you're allergic to them. Those eyes, it holds you still. I know, just look at them. Look at them eyes and subscribe. Even with your flashlight trained on it, the pupils are large, round, inky. Flashlight flickers. Oh no, the flashlight went out. Whatever shall I do? And the cat's gone. Yeah, usually they do that too. When the second you don't look at them, they're gone. Fear immediately grips your mind. The silence punctured the rapid pumping of the silence punctuated with the rapid pumping of your blood in your heart. Jeez, I'm having a stroke trying to read is overwritten as your eye, your ears slowly start to pick up the sound of static all around you. How is the clock working with no power? You don't know such a question, or you don't know why such a question matters at the moment, but you feel as if you're, if having the answer make sense would make everything better. I'm having a stroke, I'm just gonna say that's what it said. The order will be restored, but no answer comes out. You back away from the clock, but that's a source of light, right? And you feel the air itself coil tightly and abruptly in the response like a predator preparing to pounce like a cat trying to play with you but waiting menacingly waiting for the next move but you're afraid to move you're afraid to even take a breath but you can't stay still forever right whatever is watching you you can already feel its impatience it's too eager you don't know how you know this you don't know how you know this but you can sense it as clearly as if it had whispered, Let's play. 
Welcome to my let's play, said the cat. Right in your ear. Right into your soul. That's normal for cats too, they just do that. It won't let you wait it out. Not that you could even... Not that you could even if you did. Can't stay here. You have to run. With this thought, a sudden primal instinct awakens within you, making you tear, making you tear yourself into a hasty burst of movement of action, but you're still weak from the fears grip on your mind. Your legs tangle together, kinky, under the under you in your haste and you fall to the ground. Oh, oh god. The cat's got me. A sharp pain explodes in the center of your foot. At first you think you've broken your ankle, but something warm and wet tingled down the length of your foot, pulling underneath. You hear the sound of metal scraping the tile. Oh, did the cat grab the knife? When winded from your fall, you look up in a daze and see the object glinting in the strange light coming from outside. Light pouring in from your now open front door. Thoughts of how, when, who, what in regards to inexplicably open the door screech to a halt. As your brain finally identifies the metallic object you've been staring at. It's a kitchen knife, and still tinted red from your from your bl earlier blunder, but that's not right. Wasn't it completely lit clean by the... You gulp dryly at the pain in your foot. You barely have time to wonder how the knife ended up on your living room floor to be stepped on. Instead of rest... Oh, instead of resting your cutting... Instead of resting on your cutting board in the kitchen where you left it, jeez. Look at them eyes, when you spy something in the darkness beyond the knife. It spies back at you. Is it going to sneak up and start cleaning off the blood again? Cause it's like an evil demon apparently. A pair of glowing eyes, golden eyes come from, or come forward as the cat emerges from the shadows into the light in your doorway. Ah, it pads lightly over the knife, as if skipping in delight. It bends down, <laughs> it bends down the lap on the blood dripping from the blade. Ah, your senses slowly begin to overwhelm you. The chill in the air starts to suffocate you under its weight. The sound of your shaking breaths discordant against the static now piercing your skull. <laughs> the dryness of your tongue is spreading to your throat. In the incom I'm having a stroke. The incomprehensible and the incomprehensible sight of the stray you'd taken in, licking away at your kitchen knife, once again cl cleaning it. The scent of blood from the fresh wound on your foot. Blood. Oh, the cat, the cat wants more. Golden eyes slide up to you, responsible for your sudden realization. Blood, you're hurt. Your foot is bleeding, you're bleeding, you're bleeding. The cat merely moves, shoulder twitching, as if it considered the act of pouncing forward. But you're already on your feet and out the door. You ran out rather limp down the empty street. The sky is black, bleeding red. But there's a strange light emitting from nowhere that casts every, er, that casts everything else in white. <laughs> The houses, the trees, the road, even you, everything, except your blood. You can just barely glimpse the bloody imprints uh, on your injured foot, leaving you in the wake with every impact it makes on the ground. It hurts. It hurts. But you can't stop. You don't stop. Not when the shadow grows around you. Not when you feel the gaze of, of eyes all around you. Oh my god. All over you. We shouldn't have took the cat home. Although I still don't regret anything. I mean, the baby's gotta eat. Not when the road ahead of you is, uh, is darkened by a long shadow of something behind you. Even then, you don't stop running because if that's the cat right there, <laughs> if that's the cat right there ahead of you, then what in the world is behind you? That is, that's a question we need to be asking. Ooh, ooh, I'm gonna save that. I feel like that's a good spot to save. Keep running. Run towards the cat. Uh, -huh. interesting. How very, very interesting. Ending zero, it begins. Wait, that's it? No, 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 no. I want to see the other one. Look behind you. Huh. Interesting. Very interesting. It begins. Wait, what? Oh, keep running? Interesting. How very interesting. It begins. Okay, so it's the same ending either way. What? Interesting. Okay. I got you. Back. Whoa! We can just go full... Full back. That is so cool. Main menu. Yes. Interesting. How many endings are there? Oh my god, there's 40 endings in this game? We got the... We got the very basic first ending. How do I, uh... Oh, okay. We're back here at the cat. We're just gonna skip through. We're not taking you home. Not this time. Sadly, as cute as the cat is, you'd never take this thing home with you. You can't just take it home with you. You're a responsible adult. Meow. 
No, there, there's no way you can pay bills, blah, blah, blah. The, you, you know, there's no way you can care for a cat long term, right? You can barely afford to live on your own. Oh, it's insistent. What what to do? You can play with it. Play with it. You just want a little attention, don't you? Poor thing. Uh, there's gotta be something you can entertain a little critter with. But what? What? Look around the area. Maybe. How about a game? You decide on a game, red light, green light, a classic. Teaching a cat how to play might be a bit of a challenge, but you feel the feline's natural human instincts will help help it get along. You walk along the entrance of the alley and the cat's meowing at you. Don't worry, I'm not going anywhere. You exaggerate your movements, covering your eyes with your hands and turning around. One, two, three. Like, you spin around. The cat hasn't left the box. Try something else. That's okay. Buy a toy. After being out of this alleyway alone, who lo Oh yeah, whatever. Yep. You personally think your furry friend deserves something special. I'll be right back, okay? Meow. You quickly leave the alley and rush to a nearby pet store. You browse through all the cat toys. There's so many to choose from, but you realize the most important- the most- that most of the toys aren't meant for the cat to play with alone. Oh, it just- it wants me to take the cat. Another. That's it. You know exactly what to get. After a, a quick and successful search of the store, you make a purchase and rush back to the alley, eager to show off your finding. I'm back. The alley feels even gloomier after spending time in the direct sunlight. It makes you feel that much prouder of your gift. Uh, you skip over to the cat and dig in the store's plastic bag. I got you something. Meow. The cat leans up curious about the bag's contents. You pull out the gift. Oh, it's another cat. <laughs> Ta-da. I mean, it's a plushie, but yeah. The little orange and cream colored plushie, making it resemble a tabby cat. Synthetic fur is soft, but unrealistic, so... Okay. There's no denying it's a plushie. Uncanny do the real thing. Which makes it perfect. A companion for the cat. And one you could afford. Win-win. Meow? That's not all. You squeeze it, and it meows. Oh no. Is it gonna- is it gonna destroy this cat? The cat looks unimpressed. Hmm. Well, you think it's cute. Guess your purchase wasn't so successful after all. Out of options and low on cash, you awkwardly place the plushie next to the box. You get up and turn around to leave. You take a few steps when you hear electronic meow behind you. Huh? Plushies on the ground, oh no. The cat watches you, closely staring. Leave, ungrateful little monster. You huff in annoyance. You're welcome. You gotta leave once again. Oh, ew, oh, it's, it's attacking me. Crying out, you grab your arm only for it to fall off. Oh my god. What ending did we get here? Your arm just completely falls off. You stare in shock at your severed limb on the ground. Gathering your courage, you... You turn to look at where your arm was once connected to see the rest of it. Yeah, whatever. I'm having a stroke. Am I stuffing? Not blood. It's cotton. It's a plushie. Touching it, the stump doesn't even hurt. That is until something happens to your other arm. Oh my god. The cat is just destroying me. You fall when both your legs succumb to the same nonsensical fate. Crying out in agony that comes and goes like it never happened. As if you're not currently laying on a dirty ground of an alley, limbless. What in the world is going on? I can't make sense of any of this. Can't think straight. I am the plushie. The pain has receded, leaving you with a strang leaving you with a strangely empty pit in your stomach. Considering you have considering you still have a st or, I'm having a fucking stroke trying to talk. Considering you still have a stomach and it wasn't replaced with cotton. As you lay back helpless and shock staring at the sky. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a baby. The cat's face appears in your line of vision. I don't care if it's a demon. Your lungs at your torso start... It lunges at your torso and starts biting and clawing into your chest like a chew toy. It doesn't hurt anymore. You feel like it should. You're not sure if you're glad that it doesn't. Eventually, you feel the cat pull something out. A small doll looks very familiar. It's hard to tell, but that doll is... That's you, isn't it? Cat hops off of you and heads back to the box with a surprise, at least you think so. Everything's too dark to tell. You wake up and find that you can't move an inch. You can't look around, you can't breathe, though none of those realizations seem to be a problem. All you can see is the face of a familiar looking cat curled up purring, is it, purring itself to sleep. For some reason that doesn't bother you. You're not sure, because why would it bother you? I mean, this is a this is the best ending here. You try to latch onto your thoughts in your head that feel like memories of another life, another time, another you, but the thoughts slip away like forgotten dreams. Oh well. That's fine, isn't it? You're just a doll, after all. And a doll's rule isn't to have silly thoughts or to remember unimportant things, but to be a companion. Purr. Judging from the cat's content purring. 
Content purring. You seem to be performing your role perfectly. You are filled with an overwhelming, overwhelmingly strong sense of pride at this fact. And so do you, and, and so to you. Oh wait. And so to and so you too feel content. Ending thirty-five. Cotton headed. I really liked that one. That was cute. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to leave this episode off here. If you like what you see, hit the like button. If you want to see more, definitely subscribe. That was such a cute game. I, I don't know. I really liked that one. I mean, it was it's a horror, right? But, I mean, it's not. It was good. If you like what you see, hit the like button. See more subscribe. This is on HIO if you want to play it. We're almost at 5,000 subscribers if you want to help us get there. I appreciate it. And, yeah, I hope you liked it. That was fun. I'll see you guys next time.